Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here on Sammy Taramina blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Between Commands on Oriental Retosh. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching um, on YouTube this week. Of course, we have the um, the um, Red Preview Show going on on the MTV side on Oriental Television. So we're going to be filming this episode of the podcast here on YouTube. Um, first two weeks of the season, we've really have had a lot of storylines. Um, really have, it's really been, you know, some surprises, a lot of shocks. Um, you know, some teams that kind of really expected that would just come off and just, you know, you kind of really didn't expect to see what was going on. So, you know, let's look at um. You know, let's look at of course some teams that I was really been impressed with, really surprised. Um, I would start off a team that really impressed me. Um, who's got out when I start? Um, you kind of think you know. Let's look at some of the games first before we talk teams. I mean, obviously, you know, you look at some games from week one. Um. You know, Northville Lake Orion really was a very intense game. Um, Lake Orion won that one 21 13. Um, Clarkson um, coming back from 28 13 down, um, tied it up, Bell, tied Belleville up at 28. Um, and then Bryce Underwood had to really just save them. I mean, you know, I, obviously, I'll be honest with you, I thought Clarkson was a better team that game um, than Belleville. Um, but. Bryce Underwood really was the one who bailed him out in that one. And, you know, you can say all you want, you know what I mean, about Belleville. I think Belleville, honestly, um, defensively, not as good as I thought it would be. Um, credit for Clarkson, I was going to Alex Wachensko. Um, You know, um, Nick Wachensko, obviously. Um, a nice game. I mean, he had a really nice game, and the Bowman Twins had a nice game there. But... You know, obviously, Clarkson resiliency showed a lot in that game week one. Um, Oxford and um, Oxford and Utica Eisenhower, he kind of really, you know, Bryce Hurley went nuts on Oxford. Just, you know, couldn't believe what happened there. Um, kind of all five touchdowns in that game. Um, you know, Harper Woods surviving 43-21 against Redford Union. Um, West Booby, no issue with them. Chippewa Valley, um, um, 42 nothing. That was a surprise. Um, Adams knocked off um, Chip Romeo in overtime, 22-21. It was a heck of a game. Adams had a 14 nothing lead. Romeo came back, um, then scored a forced overtime, and they, then they scored a touchdown, lead 20-14. Adams then responded, Rylan Waters um, scoring, and then getting a winning two-point conversion, 22-21 um, that one. Um, Rochester, no issue with Frazier, 37 0. Um, AT, 46 0 over um, Flint Beecher. Um, and, um, you know, you, and then Groves, of course, impressive. 35 um, 14 win against UD Jesuits. Um, blue side of things, you know, blue side of things, um, North Farmington losing 27 22 to Loboney Stevenson. Farmington 17 6 over Oak Park. Um, then you had Seaholm forty nothing over Troy Athens was a shock, um, really much was a shock. Um, and then um, you know, and then you really look at um, you know Troy no issue Booby Hills 35-7. Um, and then the Gold side um, Pontiac no issue with Detroit um, Frederick Douglas forty nothing. Um, you know, Berkeley falling in overtime seven nothing the Wall Lake Central. Um, Royal Oak getting shellacked 38 13 by Detroit. Um, you know, by um, by um, I mean, it was a you know, and I think I kind of it kind of it, it's not on the tip of my tongue right now, but they were just they they were crushed. Um, so it was not pretty. Avenue losing 2014 Cedar Springs that was an upset for me. I mean, didn't expect that one coming. Um, Ferndale losing 27 18 to Boney Clarenceville. Um, you know, so when I look at storylines from week one, obviously Clarkston, you mentioned that Lake Orion, um, winning over Northville, that's a big deal. Um, Frack mentioned Stony Creek, 42-21 or Warren Cousineau. 
Um, you know, so when you look at storylines, everything's starting to really come into play here after the first week. Um, you know, kind of got an idea where everybody's at. Um, then week two comes along, and there were some crazy, crazy things. Real crazy things. We had the red versus white crossover. Two non-league games. Um, you know, I mean, like, so when you look at, you know, when you look at, and then, of course, you had, um, you know, so, you know, and then the blue versus gold. Um, you know, obviously, the blue gold games, um, let's start with the non conference. Um, Bloompia Hill is getting shellacked 42 nothing by Dearborn Divine Child. Um, I'll tell you what, Bloompia Hills is not good. Seriously, they are not good. Um, you've given up 70 points in the last two weeks. I mean, you know, it, actually 77 points the last two weeks. You've been outscored 77 7 the last two weeks. You know, I don't know if this was expected, um, but, you know, 77 points in two games, is that's bad. That's that's really bad. Um, and I don't know if there's any answer to put it in for, if you're Coach Dan Lort. Is, you know, I don't know what to say or mention. You know, the last two weeks you've been outscored. You know, you've given up over 30, you give up over 30, 38 points a game. That's bad. That's, that's bad. Um, and I know during media day, you know, there's a lot of opportunity upper, um, you know, I didn't get much on Blue Bills coming in there. I really didn't, you know, but Bloomby Hills, I'll be honest with you. I just don't know what to say. I just really don't know what to say with them. I, I just don't. I mean, a lot of questions there. It really is. Um, then we have Farmington winning over Holly 33-7. Um, getting ready for their, um, for the Farmington Cup match. Um, against North Farmington. Um, when I look at Farmington, um, this is a team that I've been really high on to start the year. There's a reason why I had them favored in this division. Um, they got a quarterback in Julian Johnson. The rushing attack is solid. They got a good line. Um, so when I look at Farmington, the job that Coach Jason Albright's done, it's been really impressive. I mean, it really has been really impressive. I mean, like, the ranking itself really justifies where Farmington's at right now. I mean, they were impressive defensively against Oak Park, and then they were very good against Holly. I mean, very good against both of them. So when I look at both teams, I mean, 13 points allowed in two games is really, really good. It really is. Um, and then they're scoring. They're scoring a bunch of points. I mean, obviously 17 against Oak Park. Now, obviously Oak Park is a – Oak Park, yes. I mean, like, I think they're much improved than they were last year. But you look at Farmington and the way that that team is right now, they're, they got a lot of confidence right now heading into that – heading into that um, Farm to Cup match with, Far, with North Farmington. Um, this weekend over at Ron Holland. I mean, this is good. I mean, Farmington right now, they're in a really nice spot. They really are. So, but Farmington, obviously, got a quarterback in Julian Johnson. Um, he's played really good football. The defense has played really good. I mean, a lot of credit to that to Farmington right now. Now, a team I've really been impressed with has been Seaholm. Seaholm, obviously, they lost a lot of talent last year. They lost a lot. And for what they've done against some good competition, by the way, they've done some things against some really good competition. I mean, you know, Coach Jim DeWall has done a nice job. I mean, Penn Roberts has really played really well. He has for Seaholm. He has on both sides of the ball. So you really look at Seaholm and... You know, and say to yourself, you know, this year was supposed to be a down year for them. It was supposed to be. Um, 
but you know they it looks like they have they haven't missed a beat. I mean, you knock off a very good Avondale team on twenty one seven. Now Avondale, we're going to talk about them in a couple minutes. Um, I I think with Avondale, I I think this team's in some trouble. I really do. Um, so with Seaholm, you know. The games you're going to probably have to judge them are going to be the Groves game, obviously. Um, I, I, the Troy game's interesting. I think the Farmington game's going to be the key game for them. Um, maybe North. I mean, North, I don't know how North just can't seem to catch a break. Um, but when I look at Seaholm, I mean, like, defensively, they haven't missed a beat. Seven points allowed in the last two games. Pretty impressive. Really impressive. I think right now you're starting to get an idea of how that division's looking. Um, with Troy on the other Troy, you can't you can't put a gauge on them. You really can't. Because albeit, you know, Pontiac, not a deep team, but they had no problem 35 nothing that game. And then 35 seven against um Bloomfield Hills. So the gauge I think for Troy is gonna be set this week when they go to Lake Orion. Um so obviously Nor Ori, Lucas Tick, um, you know, Jalen Peacock and company, they're gonna have their hands full this week with Lake Orion. I think they're gonna that's gonna be the gauge where you're gonna really see a choice for real or not. I mean yeah, two and zero is a good start for them. They're two and zero is a good start for them, but the two games as I mentioned in the previous show, um, Notre Dame Prep and Lake Orion are going to be the games that you're going to gauge them. You're really going to have to. Um, you know, North Farmington as I mentioned can't catch a break. Um, they fell twenty seven twenty two to Livonia Stevenson, and then last week fell on twenty to twelve at Ron Holland Field to Ferndale. Um, you really feel bad for them. Um, they found a quarterback in Terrence James. He's had, he's been solid. Um, but defensively has been the biggest problem for North Farm. I mean, last week, I mean, two weeks ago against the Boney Stevenson, they just could not get in the end zone. I mean, they were stuffed twice at the one yard line. They really were. So, you know, you kind of figured things out um, with them is their issue is they just can't seem to put it together. They really can't. Um, so with North, you know, this is a big game for them this week going against Farmington. Um, this game could save their season if they win this game. If they don't win this game, I don't see how they're going to make the playoffs. I really don't. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Um, we talked Boompy Hills already. Um, Troy Athens. You know, when I look at Athens, and here's a team that, you know, coming into the year, you excited to see how this team would be with Nate the Pigot. Um, obviously, you look at what's been going on um, with them, and there are some question marks. There are some serious, serious question marks. Um, I think with them, it's going to come down to is, I think with them, it's going to come down to is Ken Troy. I mean, Ken Troy Athens figure it out. The problem that I have with them is, I think Troy really, I think Troy really, you know, Troy Athens really, I don't know if I was, if I said that, um, if I was coming into the year with Troy Athens and I said to myself, okay, here is the thing with Athens. You have excitement with this team. There, it was excitement with this team. And this team just cannot, you know, first week of the year, taking on Seaholm. Seaholm was down coming in the year. And then you basically just go and lay an egg week one. 
You just go lay an egg week one. You were, you were just outplayed. You lost that game. You lost that game. And I don't know if it was the beer that caused them problems, considering they had all week to prepare. All almost like, almost like um, a couple months to prepare for that offense. Um, then they had a bounce back win against Berkeley, twenty to nothing. Um, you know, yes, they sit one and one, but there's still some question marks with Troy Athens. There still is. Um, so, for Coach Tom Cook's team, there's really some question marks. Really is. Um, then Oak Park. Oak Park, you look at the Knights. Fell week 117-6 to Farmington. Bounce back, knocked off Royal Oak 19-7. Uh, albeit, you look at Oak Park and say to yourself, you know, has this team really improved? Have they? I think they have. I think they. I think they have. But the question marks I have with Oak Park are still there. They're still there. I mean, how do you explain it? There's question marks with that team, but they started off strong. They got back in the thick of it. It's a good win for them. Really good win for them. Uh, knocking off Royal Oak. Um, Royal Oak. I- I'm at a loss for words. We're going to talk Google in a minute here. But with Oak Park, um, you really look at with them is can Oak Park keep this up? You know, can they keep opponents defenses down? I mean, like, can they keep their, um, can they score points against opponent defense, opposing defense? Can they score, you know, you know, the win against Royal Oak was a start. Really is. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, let's go from the, when I look at the division overall, the blue, um, as I mentioned, I think Farmington's still the best team in this division. Then it's Seaholm. Um, Seaholm's not that far behind. Troy, you're going to know a lot about them this week and in two weeks against Notre Dame Prep. You're gonna, and against Lake Orion and Notre Dame Prep, but especially this week against Lake Orion. Um, so you really look at... And then you look at the rest of the division. You've got North Far- I mean, Oak Park, North Farmington are you know, pretty much there. Troy, right now, I would say right now, is third behind North Farmington and Oak Park. Um, you know, they're third, and then you have North Oak Park, North Farmington. Um, then you have Troy Athens and Bloomfield Hills. That's pretty much the order I would have right now. You know, when you look at the rankings, when you look at everything that's been going on, I still think Farmington's the best team in that division, followed by Seaholm, then Troy, um, um, then um, Oak Park, then North Farmington, um, Troy Athens, and Bloomfield Hills. So really, that's my take on the blue. So that's my take on the blue. Um, let's go to the gold. Um, when I look at this division, um, was not a good week for the division. Really wasn't in week two. Um, when I look at Berkeley, um, Berkeley had that tough overtime loss to um, Wall Lake Central, um, losing seven nothing. And then last week was a complete disaster. First half disaster was 20 nothing, And that was the same score. Berkeley defensively is better. I think they're defensively there so much better. Um, the problem with them is they can't score. They cannot score. And that's really the biggest problem I have with Berkeley. And yes, obviously you're changing systems. You know, you're going from Coach John Shields to Coach Casey Humes. Um, but you've been really competitive. You know, you, I mean, like the game against Wall Lake Central, that was that could have gone either way. Really could have. Troy Athens, they just had a bad first half. You know, so when you look at it, Berkeley. 
They just haven't been able to put things together. Now, albeit this is going to be their home opener coming against Pontiac, but Berkeley, they have to figure it out quick. You know, they got to put it together because if not, they're in trouble. You know, and I think, you know, when you look at it here, I, I think right now when I look at Berkeley right now, it's just they've got to score. They have got to score. I mean, defensively, 27 points in two games, that's actually pretty good. That is pretty good. You know, I mean, but the bottom line is this team offensively has to score. Do you have to change offensive philosophies? I think, honestly, this team has to spread it out more. They have to get their athletes going. This is a team that, if you're a team that just wants to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, that's not going to fly. You know, that's not going to fly. You've got to have balance. you got to have both sides of football clicking on all cylinders. you got to have the run game going. you got to have the pass game going. I think that's been the biggest problem for Berkeley is, you know, they haven't been able to figure it out offensively. They really haven't. And when they get in the red zone, they find a way to to mess it up. They find a way to turn it over or, you know, or not or um not make a fourth down. I mean, you don't that's the problem I have with Coach Casey Hughes team. And <laughs> that's really the heart of the problem is right now. Is I think the biggest problem right now that faces Berkeley is they have to find ways to score. They got to score. You know, if not, they're in trouble. They really are. So, for them, they've got to find ways to score. We'll see what happens. Um, Royal Oak. You know, I'm at a loss for words explaining Royal Oak. I mean, Week one, <laughs> they lost 38-13. They lost 38-13. It was not good. Now, albeit, last year, <laughs> you know, that same team took Pontiac to overtime. Um, and it was a classic. They've gotten better. Royal Oak's a D2 school. And the way they played in week one was not good. So I'm trying to figure out what is going on with Coach Colin Campbell's program. What's going on? Week two, they played better against Oak Park. I thought defensively they played better. But offensively, they were held to seven points. So it's kind of a very interesting thing how to describe Royal Oak is where's this team's identity, especially offensively. I think that's the biggest problem they have right now is on offense. They don't, I don't know if this team can balance it out. I don't know. I mean, you know, you, you look at the personnel that they have, I mean, there is some serious questions, some serious concerns. I had some concerns like that coming in the year for this team. So when I look at Royal Oak, you know, look at the two games they lost. I mean, they clearly played better against Oak Park than they did in week one. They've got to figure some things out over there. They have to figure out what is their identity. What is their identity? You know, compete. You know, you know, compete. Yeah, you compete. Everybody competes. But what is your identity? The biggest problem, in my opinion, with Royal Oak is not their defense. It's their offense. You're going to have to change something over there if you're Colin Campbell. You're going to have to change something offensively. Because it... Cause just running the football is not going to get the job done. You gotta find you gotta find some offense. You gotta find some offense because 20, 20 points in two games 
is not going to cut it. And I know they know it. They got to get that thing fixed, figured out quickly. They got to get that figured out quickly. And then we have um, Pontiac. 40 nothing against Detroit Frederick Douglass. And then last week they fell 35 nothing to Troy. Now, albeit, you know what I mean? That is, um, Troy, you know, it is what it is with them. It really is. But for Pontiac, they just got to get back to basics. They got to get back to basics. If you coach Wendell Jefferson, you got to get back to basics. You're fine. I'm not pressing the panic button on Pontiac. I really am not. Big one this week for them at Berkeley, though. But they're going to have to find a way to bounce back. They were gonna, they're going to be fine. They're going to be okay. They're going to be okay. Team that I'm really concerned about is Avondale. I mean, first two games, I mean, you look at week one against Cedar Springs, albeit we had that storm cause Avondale to lose power, move their game to Troy Athens. Um, Avondale ended up losing that one 2014 to Cedar Springs. Um, and then last week, um, going to Seaholm, um, falling 21 to seven. Um, to me, the problem for Avondale is offensively. And that was a concern that coach Bob Meyer had heading into the year was your defense was going to carry in games and pretty much the defense, they fall 41 points. I mean, still, it's a little too much. But if you've been on the field more than your offense has, then that's a problem. Then that is a serious problem. So when I look at Avondale, when I look at Avondale, clearly the quarterback situation has not been figured out over there. Um, I'm wondering where Justin Greer Sykes is. I'm uh, wondering where Cameron Volfrey is at. You got athletes. You have athletes, but you haven't been able to put it together offensively. And I know that drives Coach Bob Meyer nuts. Has to. So for Avondale, they've got to find some offense. That is their key heading in later into the year. That's their key. They've got to find some offense. Because if they don't, they're in trouble. And then there is Ferndale. Ferndale had the only win of the weekend of the league, but they sit at one and one. They had a tough 27 18 loss to um, Livonia Clarenceville. No, Livonia, oh, sorry, Mass Knights Lampier. And then they had that, then they not went to Ron Holland and won 27 20 to 12 over North Farmington. Um, so when I look at Ferndale, they have a ton of experience, but as I mentioned earlier, the site that week one, besides playing bad for three quarters against Mass Knights Lamp here, Ferndale's been a team that really has been up and down. They've really, they've started to play better, you know, the last five quarters. They've really started to put things together and played good football for five quarters. And that says something right there for Coach Eric Royal. They've got to figure out how, you know, to be consistent every time. They've got to figure it out. Because if they don't, you know, they're going to be in for a long year. And I know a lot of people at Ferndale, you know, last season, you know, when they missed the playoffs, I mean, like, it was not, it was a very unusual feeling for them not to make the playoffs last year. It really was. So if you're Coach Eric Royal... You've got to really get some things fixed, get some things situated. You do that, you're going to be okay. You do that, you're going to be okay. So that's my take on the Eagles. I mean, so when I look at the gold right now as a division, Ferndale to me makes a little bit of a leap on Avondale because of, you know, they have that win against North. But I still think Avondale is the best team in this division, despite their 0-2 start. Um, then I would say right now, Pontiac, Berkeley, Royal Oak. I mean, that's really what I'm saying right now, what I'm seeing. 
So right now, that's my take right now in that division. Um, let's go now from the um from the gold to the white. Um, a lot of head scratchers over the week here. Um, you know, you look at the division. You look at this division. You know, you know, Groves right now is pretty much the most impressive team. I mean, they won two, both games. Um, very impressive week one against Detroit University, Detroit Jesuit, winning 35-14. Um, Noah Sanders had a big game. Um, Ryan Counts has really been playing well for this team. And then Mario Lachado had two touchdowns last week against West Bloomfield, and that says something right there. And beating them 28-13 last week, that says something. Really does. But when you look at Groves in Coach Brent Flaherty's team, the only thing you're going to judge them is not by the regular season. You're going to, no, you're going to judge them in the playoffs because when they get into the postseason, it's not a, it's not a if anymore when it comes to Groves. It's when. Um, you're going to figure out where are they going to put you. Are they going to put them with Warren D. LaSalle, which I think is a very difficult matchup because Warren D. LaSalle right now, I think it's the best team in Division Two right now. Um, so, and you obviously you look at Groves, you got players on that team. Chris Little there, you got um, Avery Guy, you got, um, you know, Noah Sanders, Mario Lachado. Um, the defense has been playing really good football. So Groves right now, to me, I think right now stands out as the team to beat in this division. They really do. Um, I thought coming in the year, Harper Woods would be. Um, so when I look at Harper Woods, um, kind of really figure, I mean, like they look, they didn't look good against Redford Union. Um, they were tied 21-21 until they had that weather delay. Um, and then, um, and then, you know, you know, they, they found a way outscored Redford Union 22, nothing, um, won that one 43, 21. Then came last week and I watched that game and I just was in complete shock, complete shock. Harper Woods was dominated by Oxford. Jack Hendricks felt comfortable. He was crisp. Got the ball to his wide receivers. He was crisp. Really was. And then, you know, they shut down Kobe Bailey. They forced they forced um, Nate Washell to throw interceptions. Wide receivers did not help. Rush low in that game either. And then their defense just got totally ripped apart. So you kind of really think about it. You know, it kind of was the perfect storm for Harper Woods. They have problems against teams on the M24 corridor. Last year, it was Lake Orion who got them, 28-6. This year, it's Oxford who got them, 38-0. What was shocking to me was the fact that Harper Woods could not score against Oxford. Oxford's defense was really good in that game. And this was the same defense that Bryce Hurley went nuts on two weeks ago against Utica Eisner. This was the same defense. So when I look at Harper Woods, this is a team that I think could be in some trouble if they don't fix a lot of things. And I know Coach Rob owed really well. And they just named Thomas Wilson a new athletic director um, this last week. They named him new AD. And we know what he, what he, he's got a very good football mind, you know, especially when he was at Troy Cast Tech. Um, and he was at Michigan State recently. Um, so, this is not a good look for the Pioneers right now. Really is not. You know, the fact that 
they lost 38 nothing. They couldn't even score against Oxford. Now, with the traveling issue, it can be. You know, especially when you're going on traffic, you know, up to um, up north. But knowing the pine, that's not an excuse. Considering, you know, look at who you got to deal with next week. You got Nova Detroit Catholic Central. That's a difficult matchup there, too. Still got to go to Groves. I mean, you know, as well. And that's difficult. So there are a lot of issues right now for Harper Woods that they got to fix. But couldn't believe the 38 nothing score last week, really, for Harper Woods. I mean, that was mind-boggling for me. That was just shocking. I was more shocked seeing that score. And then you look at Stony Creek. I mean, Stony Creek, nice week one win against Warren Cousineau, 42-21. Um, the game was tied at 21 for a bit. Then Stony Creek um, found a way and pulled away late. And then they ran in Lake Orion. Um, 42-13 was that final. Um, they just had no answer for T.R. Hill, Jackie Vasquez, and um, Kyle Ingham. They really did not defensively. Offensively, Coach Rick Powell's got to find a quarterback. He's got to find and settle on a quarterback. Um, because... Stony Creek right now, they look, they look, they don't look very good offensively right now. They really don't look good offensively. And they got to fix that. Now, yes, there's talent coming. The future's bright over there. The problem I have with Stony is, you know, they've got to find consistency at quarterback. You just can't rely on Sam Fogler to carry you. You've got to find balance on both the offenses, on the offensive side of the football. You've got to find balance. You know, you've got to ha develop a passing game. And they really struggled developing a passing game against Lake Orion. They really did that. So if you're Stoney, you're going to have to find balance quickly, especially in the passing game. But... You know, so there are, you know, there's talent over there at Stony Creek. They're going through, they're going through a transition period, and it has to happen, unfortunately, during the season. So that's really where the problem lies for Stony is they they're going through a transition period right now. And then there's Rochester. Look good against Brazier, thirty-seven nothing. And and then last week against Adams. Or if with them, they were they had a battle with them. Um, you know, seven out and a half, fourteen nothing, end of the third. Um, couldn't score against Adams. Fell twenty one nothing. Uh, fell twenty eight nothing. Um, get credit Adams' defense. Ryan Waters had three touchdowns in that game. Rod Adams did a really good job shutting down. Um, Jack Lauer, they did a really good job shutting him down. I mean, Rochester, you know, their starting quarterback right now is a freshman. Um, there's some things that um, they can get fixed. There's some things. They're going to be fine. Rochester's going to be fine. A team that's not fine right now is Southfield. I mean, 46 nothing against um, Flint Beecher. Um, but then they ran into Clarkson. And everything just fell apart. 48 nothing. Now, I'll be at Clarkson wearing new white uniforms. Not a fan of them. They should have kept the all-white look that they wore against Belleville. I mean, but with A&T, you knew this was going to be a down year for them. You knew this was going to be a down year. Kind of explain it. Said it before the year. Southfield was going to be rough. It was going to be rough for them. That game with Clarkson really proved everything. Really did. So my take on the white. Um, Groves is my best team right now. Then it's Harper Woods. Um, I still would give the odds at Sony Creek. Then Rochester. And then um, 
A&T. So that's my early take right now. Now, people would say Rochester over Stoney would also make sense, too. So, you know, but still, I think the top two teams right now are Groves, Harper Woods, then either Rochester or Stoney, and then um, A&T. So, really, that's the take right there when you look at it. When you look at it. Let's go to the red. Um, good week for the red against the white. Um, I think it was 171-19. to um, got to figure it out. Um, Adams, 2-0. Oh, um, 22-21 against Romeo, as I mentioned earlier, um, in week one. Uh, 28 nothing last week. Ryan Waters has accounted for, I think, all six touchdowns that Adams has scored this year. Um, so when you look at Adams, um, everything starts and ends with Ryan Waters. Lancher Tillerson's been really good for them as well. But everything starts and ends with Rylan Waters. Because he's the he's the guy who who um he's the guy that keeps everything together for them. Um so when you look at Adams, they're right now, they're in a nice spot, but they know the schedule is gonna be difficult. The win against Romeo is huge for them right now. It really is. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, but Adams right now, off to a nice start. Defense looked better against Rochester. They shut him out. Um, you know, held the 21 points. I mean, Romeo, Romeo has really fallen apart. I mean, they're 0-2 right now. Uh, they just lost the growth point south 34-16. They were down 34-3 at one point last week. So that kind of tells you that Romeo has not been the same since that um since the ad since that two point conversion Adams made really haven't. Um, and then you look at then let's look at Oxford. Oxford week one. Jack Hendricks did not look good against Utica Eisenhower. Your two picks. Was a turnover machine in that game. And then Bryce Hurley went off on them. Counted for all five touchdowns. And he was responsible for the two picks. Um, and then last week, Oxford goes a complete 360 and shuts down a very talented Harper Woods team. Jack Hendricks played I thought, honestly, his best game as a um, high school player, as a varsity player. That was, honestly, that was his best game. Before the season started, I thought to myself, okay, when I talked to Coach Jack Line, um, the key for me was Oxford's wide receivers. Boy, was I impressed with their wide receivers. They look good. They look really good. And then defensively, you know, Oxford, they were just butchered by Bryce Hurley two weeks ago. And then when they played Harper Woods, a team that has a lot of talent on that team. You know, when you look at players like Nate Wash, like um, Nate Washo, Dakota Garant, um, Kobe Bailey, they shut down a high-octane pioneer offense. And and this is a team that beat Clarkston last year. They went into Clarkston and, just, and beat them on their homecoming. And Oxford just went in there. Oxford just went in there on their home field and literally tore Harper Woods to shreds. And I'll be honest with you, Luke Johnson had a nice game. He had a quiet game. But he had um but he did he had he had a touchdown. He had a touchdown. Um, he was very good defensively. Um, but I think honestly, you bring you put Luke Johnson with Hendricks, uh, with with the way Jack's been throwing the ball. I'm telling you, Oxford can be very scary. They are a scary group. And against Harper, and if you think making a statement like that against Harper Woods, that's that's a statement. That is a statement. 
So a lot of credit goes to Coach Line, but also Jack Hendricks. I, he was, I'll be honest with you, honestly, that was his best game as a varsity player. Especially against a defense that has been, you know, especially against a, a, as talented as they are, the defending Division Four state champions. You know, Oxford just played a completely masterful game. They played a wonderfully masterful game. And they were dominant in all three phases. All three phases. I mean, when I look at Oxford going forward, schedule gets tougher, yes. But I'll tell you, there's a reason why I have them as a playoff team. Reason why. And you look at West Bloomfield. Um, West Bloomfield took the only loss of the week in the league last week, falling 28-13 to Groves. They had an impressive 42-0 win against um, Chippewa Valley. Now, albeit, I don't think Chippewa Valley is as good as they were last year. They got a new coach, new quarterback. Um, you know, you look at Cameron Flowers, Elijah Germ, um, Jamal Shakespeare's been as good as advertised. Bo Jackson's been solid. Um, Josh Tate. I'm really happy for this young man. He's been, I mean, he had a big game against Chippewa Valley last week. Um, but Josh Tate's been, he's been as good as advertised for Coach Zach Kilvers. The biggest worry I had for West Bloomfield was going to be their defensive secondary. And it kind of showed in that game against Groves. I mean, their defense was completely shut up by Michael Lovchato. Um, He had two touchdowns. Um, they just couldn't find any momentum in that game. They just really couldn't find any momentum. So, when I look at the Lakers, good chance when they get back to the drawing board. Be a good chance when they get back to the drawing board. They got to get some things fixed there. I mean, they got to get some things fixed. Um, and then let's go, let's talk Clarkson. I mean, when I look at Clarkson, um, the Belleville game is all you need to know about Bell, about Clarkson. The fact that they were down 28-13, um, could have just gave up. They could have just gave up. Now, I know Coach Justin Pittar's teams, they're always relentless. They don't, they don't quit. And... They find ways to get back in the, in the, in the games. They find ways. In that Belleville game, they got back in it, got it tied at 28. Had not been for Bryce Underwood's um, heroics in that game. I mean, basically, I'll be honest with you. Bryce Underwood basically saved Belleville. He basically saved. He basically averted disaster. Because if you could just imagine if Belleville started off 0-1, then that's a big conversation to have in the state right now. Now, I'm going to give praise to Clarkston's, um, Clark, to the both Bowman Twins. Both Bowman Twins are very good. I mean, they are legit. They are legit. But when in that game against Belleville, you know, I mean, like, the both Bowman Twins, they played well. But I got to give credit to, um, I think it's Alex Wachensko. Um, I mean, like, I got to get my Wachenskos, um, in order. I have it on the blog. I want to take a look at that second. I'm at blogspot.com. But I thought he played a really good game. I thought Wachensko played a really good game. Um, fell in control. Wasn't rattled. Um, scored a Big, big 77-yard passing touchdown um, to tie the game. I thought Clarkson's defense did everything they could in that game. They did everything they could. As I mentioned, had not been for Bryce Underwood's heroics in that game, you know, then I would dare tell you this right now, and I would dare tell it to you. I thought Clarkson was the better team to Belleville. I really did. At Clarkson not had at North at um so had Belleville not had Bryce Underwood on that team. Clarkson wins that game by three scores. 
That's how much I would say right now. Because, yes, Belleville is a good team. But they do have some weaknesses, especially on defense. Their defense is their Achilles heel. And if they rely, have to rely on Bryce Underwood to save them in games, you know, I know Clarkson doesn't like moral victories, but I thought that game against Belleville was a moral victory. Because now they could say, hey, we played you tough. We can beat you guys. We can beat Belleville. It's a confidence boost for Coach Justin Pinter and his team. Because they didn't quit in that game. They didn't give up in that game. That's a message sender right there. But it also tells you how good the red is. And then they played a and Had no issue with them winning 48 nothing. Um, Got a chance to play their second stringers in there. Um, helped a lot. Helped a lot. Um, and then there's Lake Orion. Um... Lake Orion had a good, had a great, had a um, gutsy win against Northville, 21 um, 13. T.R. Hill had a nice game. He had a touchdown run, a touchdown pass. Um, Jamari Cooper went off for, I think he had a 70 yard touchdown run. Um, the defense was really good in that game. Despite two very, you know, tough drives late, Lake Orion found a way. He had a heck of a Northville team. Heck of a Mustang team. Who I think is going to be, who I think is one of the favorites in the um, KLA West this year. So, good win for them. Week two, they took on Stony Creek. Um, 20, 42-13. Um, you know, obviously, Tierra Hill had a nice game. Kyle, Kyle England had two touchdowns. He had two touchdowns. Um, defense again was very good. Um, so the Dragons right now are a team that's clicking right now. They got the defense going right now. Um, your defense, the secondary is legit right now. Linebackers have been playing good. Offense has been rolling. Um, it looks like Lake Orion might have found themselves a running back. And Jane Burrell. They might have found themselves a running back. Um, and then, defensively, this team, um, you know, 20, I mean, they've only allowed um, 26 points in two games. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, Lake Warren's got Troy Lumen this week, so this should be really interesting. And then, two weeks, double O game with Oxford. That should be fun. That should be a fun one. See what happens. Thoughts on the red, obviously. I think Lake Orient's the best team in this division right now. Um, then I would say West Bloomfield, then Adams, um, Clarkston, then Oxford. But as I mentioned earlier on the preview shows, I still think all five of these teams are making the playoffs. Um, you know, obviously the non conference wins, you know, West Bloomfield, Chippewa Valley, Lake Orient over Northville. Um, Adams over Romeo. Um, you know, then obviously with last week, Art, I mean, like four of the five winning games, um, especially with Oxford's statement against Harper Woods. Um, you know, as I mentioned, this division, all five teams, in my opinion, are going to make the playoffs. I think. So we'll see what happens. See what happens. Um, this week's games, week three, for, um, obviously, we got the, um, you know, we got, um, you know, we got, um, division games, obviously. Um, so we got Ferndale taking on um, Royal Oak. I got Ferndale on that one. Um, Berkeley Pontiac. This would be a really good game. I think, um, I really like, I think Pontiac, you know, you know, with Kanye Donaldson at quarterback. Um, last year's game was 34 28. It's Berkeley's home opener. You know, they're going to be geeked up for that one. Um, you know, and I think, you know, um, that'll be a good game. I think Pontiac wins that one. They're going to be riled up for that one. So, you know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens there. Um, 
Avenel taking on McCullough Luther in North. Um, I'm going to take, um, um, I've got, you know, this is going to be a low scoring game. I think it'll be Avondale. If this is a must win game for them, if they can survive that one, I think Avondale will have a chance in this one. So, but I got McComb Luther in North. Um, you know, but Avondale needs this game, though. I, I, I'm i going to take Avondale here in this one. I think they're going to find a way to win this game. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, blue games, obviously. Um, you got, um, you got um, Troy Athens, Oak Park. I'm going to take Oak Park in that one. Um, you got Seahome, Bloomfield Hills. Um, Seahome's going to win that one. Farm to Cup, Farm to TV 10. Um, this is going to be very exciting. I think it's a very tight game. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really tight game. I'm going to take um, Farmington this one really close um, over North Farmington. But it's a big game for North Farmington. Um, like I said, their season is going to depend on that game. Um, and then there's Lake Orion Troy. I know that's the Dragons home opener. I know a lot of people around here are geeked up for that one. Um, I'm going to take Lake Orion that one. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's going to be close. Um, I just think that the Dragons offensively, um, they're, they're a scary group. I mean, Lake Orion is an extremely scary group when you look at them. Um, in that one. So I'm going to take Lake Orion in that one over Troy. Um, in the white, we got, um, Harper Woods taking on Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Really difficult matchup for Harper Woods. Um, after what happened to them against Oxford, now I get to take on a, a state power. Um, I, I don't see how Harper Woods wins this game against Novi Detroit Catholic Central. Um, they need to fix a lot of things right now. And I think, you know, where Harper Woods is right now, um, you don't know where they're at right now, mind mindset wise. That could be a real big problem um, if they can't figure that that out real quick. Um, you know, so I got the Shamrocks, that one of the Pioneers. Um, then you have Rochester versus A and T. Um, I don't know why a lot of people are picking A and T in this game, considering what happened to them against Clarkston. Um, Rochester was very competitive against Ad against Adams. Um, I think Rochester goes into Southfield and wins that game. I, I think that the, um, the Falcons are going to go in there. Um, you know, obviously with Rochester, you know, they got Jack Lauer. I think he'll, I think he'll have a bounce back game against Southfield A&T. Um, there's just a lot of questions with A&T, um, considering where they're at. Um, so in that game, I'm going to take the um, Falcons over the Warriors. And then you have Groves against Stony Creek. Um, you know, Stony Creek's coming off a really tough loss to Lake Orion. Um, I know they're going through that transition period, you know, with Coach Rick Powell. Um, it is a very difficult transition period for them. Um, so in this game, and Groves, we know, has been clicking on all cylinders after two emotional wins against um, West Bloomfield and... Um, Detroit University, Detroit Jesuit. Um, so in this one, I'm gonna take um, I'm gonna take Groves in this one. I just think they got too much experience. Um, I know the game's at Stony Creek, so but I just think the experience matters in this one. I'm gonna take the Falcons in that one to knock off the Cougars. Um, and then the two red games, of course, um, West Bloomfield and Adams. Um, I expect this game to be really, really tight. And it's Adams' home opener, which is gonna have the Gold Rush really excited. Um, going up against the Swamp. Um, you know, I think this is going to be a very tight game. I mean, Adams, if Adams can win this game against West Bloomfield, that's going to say a lot to where they're at. Um, but I just think West Bloomfield, they're going to be motivated after what happened last year, after what happened last week against Groves. Um, I think this is going to be a really, really interesting game. I'm going to take the, um, Lakers in that one over the, um, Highlanders. Heck of a game. I think it might come down to a field goal. Um, and I think it will come down to a field goal there. And then last but not least, we got Clarkson taking on Oxford. This is going to be a great game. I, I really think this is going to be a really great game. You got Al you got Wachensko going against Hendricks. You have you have um the uh, Luke Johnson against both Bowman twins. You have a um proven receiving battle. I think this battle comes down the trenches. Um, who do I trust right now 
up front. And I think a lot of – it's at Clarkston. I know a lot of people are going to give Clarkston the edge. I like Oxford in this one. I think Oxford – they could go in there and pull out the upset. I really think they have a great chance to do that. So I think Oxford could be a team that, you know, they're going to be scary. Um, if they can beat Clarkson here, that's going to say a lot. I just think right now when I look at it here, I think Oxford will find a way and pull off the upset. It wouldn't surprise me if this is a, a um, they go for two and pull off a win. This is probably going to be an overtime game, I think. Um, so, this will be a fun one. I mean, it'll be a really fun one between those two teams. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. We're going to be back on ON TV next week. Uh, make sure you follow the blog at SaginawBayForceBC at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. Um, keep an eye, we're keeping an eye on everything around basketball as well. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I will see you on next week. Take care. And I'll see you there. God bless. Y'all.